Assalamu alaikum everyone. I hope you guys are good. Uh, so in this video, we will solve some NUST entry test past paper questions, which are related to the topic differentiation. So let's get started. So here are some questions which are related to differentiation. So let's talk about the first one. Okay. So in the first question, we have derivative of cos x, right? So basically we have cos x and we have been asked to differentiate it. Well, we know that a derivative of cos x with respect to x is simply minus sine x, okay? And derivative of sine x is cos x. But when we derivate cos x, we get minus sign x. Okay, so there's a difference of minus. Now, unlike the Cambridge exams, you would not be having a data booklet, formula sheet, stuff like that. So you need to memorize all these differentiations. Okay, let's talk about the second question. In the second question, we have if the derivative of 3x cubed plus x with respect to x equals the derivative of minus 3x square minus 5 with respect to x, then x is, now basically we have a condition, we need to use this condition in order to find the value of x, okay? So this is the left hand side, according to the left hand side, we need to derivate this expression, so it would be 9x square because the power uh, multiplies with the coefficient plus one because the derivative of x is one equals the derivative of this side this would be minus six x and derivative of minus five is zero now i'll take minus six x to the left side over here so it would become nine x square plus six x plus one equals zero. Now, basically we need to do middle term breaking. So three X and three X, because when I will multiply them, I get nine X square. When I add it, I get six X. That is how we do middle term breaking. Finally, I can take three X common and I will have three X plus one. I can take one common and I will have three X plus one. And the factors are three X, plus one whole square equals zero. So this means that three X would be minus one and X would be minus one by three. So the answer is B. Again, the differentiation was extremely easy. The thing which was important is basically understanding the concept that they had given us a condition. We had to use this in order to find the value of X. Okay. Let's talk about the third question now. So basically they are saying that we have a function that is f of y equals b by q. Now, unlike the usual functions, this time we have function in terms of y. Then which of the following is true? Now in uh, one, two, and three, in three of these, they are differentiating f of y with respect to x, obviously we are going to get zero. Like these are not the answers because y is a different variable, x is a different variable. We do not have anything uh, in terms of x here, right? So these cannot be the derivatives of f of y with respect to x. So this means that it's neither one, two or three, it would be none. So d is the answer because this is y and this is x. When we are differentiating with a different variable, obviously we won't be able to differentiate the way we usually differentiate it, right? So all these are wrong answers. Okay, let's talk about the fourth question. So here we have the point at which curve y equals x square minus 4x plus 3 has gradient minus 2 is. So we need to find the point. When we say point, point means we have to find both the x and y coordinates, okay? So first we need to find the x coordinate. They are saying that the gradient is minus two at that point. 
So let's find out the gradient of this curve and equate it to minus 2 and see what values of x do we get for that. So dy by dx is basically the gradient. It is 2x minus 4 and they are saying it is equal to minus 2. Okay. Now this would be 2x equals minus 2 plus 4 and x would be 2 by 2. That is 1. Now x is turning out to be 1, right? We have um, gotten the value of x since we have to find the point. We need to find the value of y as well. But since, as I've been telling you guys, we are sitting in the last entry test exam. We don't have that much time. We need to do things quickly. So this means that as soon as we got our x value, we start uh, we should start looking at the options. So if we talk about A, no, in A point, the X coordinate is zero. In B point, the X coordinate is one. Yes, that would be the answer. And B is the only point where X coordinate is one. So there's no point in wasting your time in finding Y since we are preparing to weaken and find it. So Y would be one minus four plus three. And that certainly is zero so it is correct right but otherwise i would strongly advise an exam you don't have to waste time in calculating by when you see that the only point with x coordinate one is d okay right so let's talk about another question so this time we have if y is 2 by x then y plus 1 by 2 the second derivative of y equals what okay so we need to find the value of this. In order to find the value of this, we basically need to differentiate y twice. Okay. So let's talk about y. y is 2 by x. I can write it as 2 by x to the power minus 1. I can take this x from denominator to the numerator and I will change the power to minus 1. So the first derivative would be dy by dx equals minus 2 by x square. I can write it as minus 2x to the power minus 2 because I need to find the derivative of second order. d squared uh, by dx square, we basically call it the derivative of second order. It would be plus 4 by x cube. Okay. Now we have uh, the second order derivative, we need to write this down. So y is 2 by x, we have been told that in the question, plus 1 by 2 multiplied by 4 by x cube. I can cancel this and this. It will become 2. Now I can take the LCM, I can take x cube as the LCM. So this would be 2x square plus 2 plus x square and this would be 2 common x square plus 1 divided by x cube. So the only answer with x cube as its denominator is C option, right? So I could have stopped at this point. There was no point in finding the answer and, and doing it that way. Or in fact, at this point, when I knew that, the LCM would be x cube because you would have to solve a lot of questions in three hours only, like 200 exams in three hours. So that would be very difficult, right? So you have to be very careful while time management. Okay. Now this time the question is differentiating x to the power 9 with respect to x square we get. Now here it's not with respect to x, it's with respect to x square. So first thing is we need to write x to the power 9 in terms of x square. So I know that if I write it this way. This basically is x to the power 9. And in order to understand this, I will cancel this 2 and 2. And I will have x to the power 9, right? But obviously, we will not cancel this because this is what we are trying to do. We want to write it as x square just so we are able to differentiate it. So this would be... Okay, now we need to differentiate it. So for differentiating, we write down the old power here. It would become 9 by 2 x square and 
x square's power would become 9 by 2 minus 1, that is 7 by 2. Finally, there's no point in doing it completely. So C would be the answer because 9 by 2 is the only correct coefficient from the uh, options. But since we are preparing, so it would be x square multiplied by 7 by 2. 2 and 2 would be cancelled and that is why x has power 7 in C option. Okay, let's talk about the 8th uh, question now. We have the derivative of e to the power e x with respect to x is what? Okay. Now we have to differentiate this. In order to differentiate this, we know that whenever we have e to the power f of x and we have been asked to differentiate it, we write this thing as it is and multiply it with the derivative of power, right? So if I follow the same rule, I am going to get for this question, I will get e to the power e x as it is multiplied by the derivative of the power. The derivative of e to the x is directly e to the x into 1, right? So b would be the answer. So apparently this question looked very difficult. It looked different, but no, it was very easy. We were able to solve it easily by using basic rules, right? Okay. Let's talk about the ninth question then. The derivative of ln e x cube. Okay, now this again looks very complicated, but trust me, it's not. We know that ln and e can be cancelled, right? We don't cancel them this way, but we know that uh, ln and e basically utilize each other, so they would be cancelled, and we basically have x cube. So read the question again. Derivative of x cube with respect to x. Now, this is one of the most easiest questions. We need to find this. So this would be 3x square and the answer is a. Okay, now we have the 10th question, the derivative of c with respect to x where c is a constant. We know that whenever we differentiate any constant term, we get 0 as the answer. Let's talk about the next question. So let's say we have... Given s equals 980t minus 490t square, the velocity at the instant t equals 1 by 2 is. Now, this basically is the displacement. In order to find the velocity, we have to derivate displacement with respect to time. Okay, so let's differentiate it. Uh, velocity would be 980 minus 2 into 490 would be 980 and at this instant so I need to plug in 1 by 2 and the value would be 490 now I have two 490s one is 490 centimeter then we also have minus 490 centimeter square but our answer is positive so b would be the answer and how did I know it's centimeter in second well I don't know but the only units being used in this question are centimeter in seconds right obviously it's velocity so it cannot be centimeters so even before Read, solving the question as soon as I read this part that I had to find the velocity, I could have, you know, cancelled this directly because the units of velocity are uh, displacement per time, right? Okay. Let's talk about the 14th question. So we have x equals a cos 4 theta, y equals b sine 4 theta then. So basically, we need to find all these options have dy by dx, right? In order to find dy by dx, step one is to find dx by d theta. So this is going to be, okay, so we have cos 4 theta. Uh, so it is going to become 4a cos cube theta multiplied by the derivative of cos that is minus sine theta. This is dx by d theta basically and if I find dy by d theta, so likewise I'm going to get 4b sine cube theta and this basically would be multiplied by the derivative of sine theta that is cos theta. Okay, now we have to find dy by dx. For that I will do dy by d theta multiplied by d theta by dx. This is the chain rule. 
So I will get four b sine cube theta cos theta divided by minus four a cos cube theta sine theta. Four and four can be cancelled. Sine theta. And sine cube can be cancelled. Cos theta and cos cube can be cancelled, and we have dy by dx equals this. Okay. Now this is not the answer. I need to simplify this further, and I'm going to get this is dy and dx. So I can take this a to the other side. I will get a dy by dx equals b. I have sine square theta by cos square theta sine by cos is tan. Since we had squares, so it would be this, and we had this minus sine, so it would come here. So the answer would be A, right? So this was basically a question which we had to do using the chain rule. Okay, let's talk about the last question. So we have. To derivate ln ln of x, how do we derivate this? So basically, we do one over this function that is ln x multiplied by the derivative of this function that would be one x. So I can rewrite it as this. So this means that the answer is c. Now, obviously, it is just like the exponential question we did earlier. All these questions are, were very easy. They had some technicality, but trust me, since you would not be having your data booklet and all that, the difficulty level would not be that much. All you need to do is you have to be very careful while doing all the questions, and you should trust yourself that yes, this is basically something which you know, right? And then you would be able to do a good job. Okay, so that is it for this video. We have done fifteen questions. Which were related to the topic differentiation, and these questions are basically some sample past paper questions which were related to the same topic.